In this Rick Talk, we want to talk about type categories. Um, you know, in several of the previous um, design and type um, Rick Talks, we talked about the importance of um, achieving um, contrast, um, which is a pretty standard important element in making things that um, look good effectively. Um, uh, and uh, especially with type. And so um, let's talk about that here. Um, of course, uh, we all know that type is a basic building block of all printed pages. Usually there's more than one type element on a page. Um, headlines, subheads, um, body copy. There are thousands of different typefaces. And while um, a few folks might have some slight um, uh, different um, categories. These, um, as talked about in uh, the Robin Williams book, um, are really are um, considered somewhat universal standards uh, for uh, categories. So um, uh, we break it down in uh, this uh, PowerPoint um, into six categories, one of six categories. And remember uh, that it's the similarities that cause conflicts. Choosing two different type styles from one category makes them slightly different, but they might in fact fight each other, and that causes conflict, and of course that is the one thing we want to uh, try to avoid. And so what you want is to learn to contrast type effectively. All right, the first category is what's called old style, and it's based on uh, the early days of uh, hand lettering uh, with a wedge-tipped pen. I know that when I was in school many moons ago, we in fact uh, had uh, some classes where we worked with the old pen and ink and using different um, uh, nubs uh, to get different look and feel. Um, and we've all seen um, the folks in some old movie, Ben Franklin or something, uh, using um, a quill pen, uh, basically from a feather, and they cut the tip off at an angle. Okay, and so um, old style uh, lettering always has serifs. Remember, the serifs are these little feet um, that are at the top and bottoms of most of the letters um, in in the uh, type style and uh, so we um, um, always have serifs and notice that they are always always at a slight angle um, that again is standard um, with these type of fonts you see um, it's at a slight angle not straight across as you'll see that some of them are and all of the uh, letters um, have thick and thin areas um, what we call uh, curved strokes all have a thick and thin transition um, very important as you'll see compared to uh, some of the other categories that we'll look at in a few minutes the difference between the thickest parts and the thin parts is not very drastic um, and uh, that's very important because it makes the typeface very readable um, and uh, another uh, sort of uh, part of the jargon uh, with these type of of uh, fonts is the style always has a diagonal stress and uh, look at the red line here and notice that the thin parts the thin parts of the letter are not straight up and down it's like the letters are rolled over just slightly and that's what we mean by saying that it has a diagonal stress okay and um, very high on readability um, uh, lists and can often look very elegant um, uh, instead of using a script font uh, uh, sometimes for things like invitations or kind of traditional formal uh, sort of things if I was doing a certificate um, I might very well use a Palatino or a Garamond 
Um, we are all used to uh, seeing standard on all of our computers, etc. The variations on times. Um, Baskerville is uh, another uh, standard type style in this category. The moderns. Um, these are uh, some of my very favorite um, uh, fonts. And um, here, uh, uh, very distinctive, and, I, and that's part of uh, why I like it, um, these fonts. And um, they always um, have, first off, thin horizontal serifs. Okay, again, notice the serifs are all uh, very thin and straight across, so it gives it a crisp, clean look. All right, and um, you'll notice that there's um, a big difference between the thick parts and the thin parts of the letters. So we call that a radical um, um, or extreme differences in the thick and thin transitions. And um, so uh, that's very important. Um, because it does not work real well for body copy. Uh, think of these type styles, many of them. Um, if it's reduced pretty small, of course, you would see the thick parts, but the thin parts of the letters might literally just drop away and may be hard to see and sometimes won't print because they're just too thin. So uh, there's no evidence of the slant of the pen. As I said, the stress, uh, uh, compare this to the old style, the stress or the thin parts are straight up and down. Again, look at the little red line that I, I drew there. Um, and um, so the stress is perfectly vertical, and this style often has a very cold, elegant look. And um, if you look at... Uh, uh, things like um, the old um, uh, CBS logo. If you look at a lot of uh, fashion magazines and um, classy ads like uh, Vogue and, and Town and Country, you will see that um, often um, modern font fonts are used because of this very elegant, cold, um, clean sort of look and feel. But again, they do not work for body copy. Then we have the slab serifs. Um, <clears throat> we see this um, um, category used quite a bit. Personally, we all have our own biases of sorts, and uh, this is my least favorite category. And um, notice that there's not uh, nearly as much difference between the thick and thin parts as uh, compared, let's say, to the modern. Um, and um, uh, they often, uh, certainly to my, my thinking, they often have uh, somewhat of a clunky look to them. Um, and uh, to me, a very old-fashioned uh, look to them. And um, uh, due to the uh, little bit thicker um, uh, serifs or strokes, um, that is part of what gives them, uh, in my opinion, sort of a clunky, um, uh, old-fashioned uh, look. And um, uh, they do uh, have a darker color on the page. What we mean by that is, uh, once again, black and white images and even type has color and color in uh, even black and white um, if something is a light gray um, it has a light um, color as we say and if it uh, is a very dark gray or in this um, case um, the slab serifs are all uh, kind of dark because they have these heavy uh, pieces parts, they have a darker look on the page. And uh, once again, the stress is, is perfectly vertical. And um, they are very high on readability scale, meaning they make great body copy. 
Um, but personally, stylistically, they're just not my favorite. And personally, I would never use them in headlines, even though you see it uh, used quite a bit. Uh, Memphis, Clarendon, uh, Baskerville are some of the other fonts typical uh, in this category. Then we have the sans serifs. And what that means literally is without serifs. And of course, you can see very clearly there are no uh, little uh, things at the top of the letters and there are no little feet um, on the letters. And that's what we mean by sans serif. Um, uh, uh, the sans serif fonts typically are always mono weight, uh, meaning there's little or no thick and thin. Uh, variations or transitions in the um, the letters okay they generally have the same thickness all the way around and there is a wide variety of weights in this category um, they are very high on readability uh, so uh, good for body copy as a matter of fact um, you can find a movie um, literally a, a, a short movie that was made a number of years ago um, either in the library or I'm sure these days on YouTube and it's called Helvetica. Helvetica uh, the sans serif clean look font uh, style was created uh, back in the 50s when modern design started coming around and um, it uh, people either absolutely love it or some designers really hate it um, uh, because it is so clean and sort of lacking in personality. Um, the uh, supporters um, uh, rightly point out, and even here, if you go around town, um, Helvetica is everywhere. Everywhere. It is on um, uh, documents. It's especially on uh, look at road signs, um, uh, you know, the green signs all around town. That's a variation of uh, Helvetica. Uh, American Airlines uh, was known uh, and still is for using Helvetica. Um, go into JCPenney. Go into Target. Basically, you've got variations of uh, sans serif um, Helvetica used throughout the stores, and it's great. It's great for signage. I personally find it a bit boring um, for um, headlines, and so I will often use um, um, a variation of the Helvetica, um, such as uh, Futura or Avantgarde or Gil Sands. Gil Sands is what I've used for all of these PowerPoints that I've done. Um, and um, all of you are probably aware that every computer now comes with Arial. And Arial is um, uh, sort of a newer version of Helvetica. But um, uh, it's worth going and uh, watching the Helvetica movie. Um, and you realize how it's everywhere and um, uh, is very useful. Okay, so um, the sans serif group, um, and there's a number of uh, variations. And uh, things like Gil Sands or Futura to me have all of the, the positives of Helvetica, but um, have a little bit uh, more distinctive style and uh, uh, have a little bit of variation in the uh, thick and thin parts of the letters. Okay. Then we've got script fonts. And of course, everybody uses script fonts. And uh, they uh, certainly look hand-lettered with a calligraphy pen or brush. Um, and um, uh, the thing about the scripts, um, even more so than others, is you don't want to use them in big blocks of text uh, because they're hard to read. Never use them in all capital letters. Um, look at the Apple Chancery here below and you can see you've got all of these curly Q things we call swashes and um, any uh, type in all caps is somewhat hard to read. 
uh, but especially scripts. Um, and uh, so never, ever, ever use them in big blocks of text. Never use them in all capital letters. Use them sparingly. And some styles are very overused. Um, and uh, this Apple Chancery and Zaf Chancery um, are a couple that are like that. Most uh, folks um, who are sort of amateur uh, in the design field overuse uh, the chanceries a whole lot. <laughs> and uh, also people are often inclined to use brush script or commercial script. Well, what does it look like? It looks like it was done with an old um, hand uh, lettering brush. Well, yes. Um, so um, if you want to create something uh, today that looks retro or looks like it comes from the 40s or the 50s, hey, have at it and use those fonts. But it will never look contemporary. So... Um, uh, the, the Zaf chanceries and the commercial scripts are overused and have very distinctive uh, look and feel. Uh, there are plenty of others like uh, Bellevue um, that maybe are a little bit more distinctive. And uh, you often see them um, used very effectively. Um, uh, a single letter, often uh, it's the ampersand. Let's say um, uh, I'm thinking of... Uh, of commercials and and ads let's say for um, companies um, law firms you know it's so and so and so and so and so and so and they uh, might very well have a clean um, uh, font for the names and then there's this one very large um, uh, uh, ampersand uh, between the names and it's often in a light color or a very light gray but it is uh, and can be quite stunning when used appropriately and effectively to um, just give a special touch but not um, very much for general body copy and that sort of thing. Then we have the uh, decorative uh, category um, often they're fun, distinctive, and um, easy uh, uh, to use and easy to overuse. Again, somewhat like the scripts and uh, some uh, similar um, uh, uh, things about them is, again, don't use uh, them for long blocks of text because they can often be somewhat hard to read and like the scripts don't use them in all capital letters because um, uh, the shapes uh, make it very hard to read and so um, like the scripts you need to use them sparingly and many of these styles are uh, very overused. As a matter of fact, um, this uh, example that I have here, papyrus, um, we all uh, and many people love it. But, you know, you see it everywhere. Um, another one um, that's in this category, fajita. Fajita is another one that is very likable, but is so overused and then Comic Sans which looks sort of like hand um, kids uh, lettering again it's just that it's overused and it has a very distinct look and feel and um, so you want to be very careful about not overdoing it and here again um, a single letter um, like the ampersand might be very effective large um, uh, and, and stunning uh, visually um, like some of the script fonts. Okay, and um, uh, another area uh, within the decoratives are the grunge fonts. Um, that is all of those um, many fonts, and there are so many of them now, that you know, are um, pretty jaggedy or have texture or look like parts have been scratched out. Um, the grunge fonts was made um, a part of contemporary design, I don't know, 20 years ago by a fellow by the name of uh, Carson and uh, David Carson. 
and in um, many ways it was a contradictory answer to the ma uh, to the um, uh, sans serifs like Helvetica um, you know the people uh, that hate the Helveticas say it's just so clean and it's so devoid of personality uh, the the people that love it um, like it for that very reason clean and crisp and especially when they came around in the uh, 50s the start of the modern uh, design era after the uh, scripts and the brush scripts of the uh, 40s and 50s and um, the uh, David Carson uh, felt that, hey, what I want is uh, type styles that have very distinct personality and um, might be very gritty and grungy um, and broken uh, because I want the typeface itself to convey a feeling of uh, some intense emotion. Um, uh, and... Uh, he is the one that introduced that and it's become so much a part of our lives in terms of the written word. And so the grunge fonts definitely have their place. Um, but again, uh, you never use them for body copy. Um, and they more or less fall into the decorative um, category of type. So what we want to do here is again the uh, the main reason for talking about all this is we want to figure out how to um, appropriately get contrast okay in using type and um, you have to be very conscious you really have to pay attention to what you're doing you should look at and pay attention to other things um, done all around us in ads and television and brochures and billboards etc um, and try to state the problem or what appeals to you in words okay um, you've got to keep your eyes open and notice details look through magazines and um, have a little game of categorizing the typefaces uh, because again the idea is you don't want to combine two typefaces that are similar that are in the same category uh, you generally want to use two typefaces from different categories so that you have a lot of that contrast thing that we are talking so much about and clearly not all fonts fit neatly into just one category but um, I think this is a very effective a series of guidelines to help you um, get on your way visual awareness of letter forms is critical to create interesting provocative and effective type combinations that are going to grab attention and make the reader want to stay a little bit longer and uh, once again all of these uh, principles um, are uh, from the uh, Robin Williams uh, design book uh, the non-designers design book and um, has many other tips uh, that can be helpful in your journey um, to learn how to do this consciously and effectively and um, thanks a lot once again for uh, uh, listening to this Rick talk and I hope that these concepts especially with the uh, previous uh, couple of uh, Rick talks on design principles and how to achieve contrast um, put them all together and I think you'll uh, see that you have a body of knowledge that you can uh, very effectively uh, put to good use. Have a great day.